It's quarterfinal action of the 2021 Southwestern Athletic Conference Tournament here on ESPN3 presented by USAA. Today, the number three Southern University Jaguars from Baton Rouge, Louisiana will take on the number six seed Alcorn State University Braves. Taking a look at the bracket for the women's side, of course, yesterday, two games already in the books. Number one, Jackson State, no problem with number eight, Mississippi Valley, 70 to 47. They move on to take on the winner of Grambling and Alabama A&M, which will take place tonight at 630. And then, of course, Alabama State, they beat Texas Southern 85-69. They play the winner of this game between these two teams. Hi, everybody. Santoria Black along with Tali. And Tali, you know, look, I tell you, one of the things that we got to watch out for this game is the fact that there are some injuries that could affect this team. Yeah, uh, with Alcorn State, uh, Deja Mitchell, she's been dealing with the back injury all year long. And their team, they like to press. They like to play the full court uh, defense and put a lot of pressure on Southern. Uh, and if you're hobbled with a bit of a back injury, that could be something to look out for, definitely for all court. Absolutely. Let's talk about some of the players. Of course, uh, the players to watch presented by Mountain Dew, official basketball sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And one of those players, of course, from Alcorn State University, Kyrtis Clark. Yeah, Clark, uh, look, she averages just over 13 points a game. Not a real significant threat from behind the three-point line. She'll put it up, but she's under 30% there. Uh, but when she goes to the free throw line, she can draw contact, a 70% shooter, uh, so she can make you pay from the charity strike. And you look on the other side, you look at uh, Southern, Geneva Johnson, second team all swag. Almost they're like carving copies of each other on the stat sheet. She's right over 13 points a game. Not a super three-point shooter. She averages 20% uh, from there, but again, over 70% from the line. If she gets the contact and goes to the line, she can convert and make you pay as well. Barco Arena, day two of the 2021 Southwestern Athletic Conference Basketball Tournament. We are ready for the... And Alcorn will control things to start things out. I'll be watching today. Who can get shots to go early? We saw all teams yesterday struggle from the field early on in the game as they get used to this arena and the depth behind both goals. And a steal here. Southern University has the ball. Bounce pass. And that is Armani, that is Armani McWayne from Ruston, Louisiana, getting the bucket. 2 to nothing. Southern on top. Turning defense into offense is always a great way to start the game. 9-24 remaining first quarter. Another steal by Southern University. And once again, McWayne with the bucket. Four quick points. A perfect way to hit the trailer there. Got a little stuck under the backboard, but the trailer bails Southern out with the layup. The junior from Rustin getting the first four points of the ball game from, for Southern University. Now Alcorn with the ball. Here's the drive. The shot is up. Marco couldn't handle it. And it goes back the other way to Southern. Had the numbers there. Also had a trailer she could have hit right in the middle of the court. Uh, but just a little too much English on the pass there. Well, look at that. Nice steal. Just took her lunch money on the move. <laughs> but not quite there with the pass. Southern University really has the floor spaced well. They're going to try to find the holes in this Alcorn zone here. And right now, controlling the basketball, Southern University trying to work it inside. Shot up good. And I tell you what, Genovia Johnson, that's the young lady that Southern's going to have to look to if they're going to win this ball game. Yeah, Johnson was looking to feed the post, couldn't find the entry pass, took matters into her own hands along the baseline. And now Rasco has the ball for Alcorn. She is fighting off a lot of pressure. Man, that defensive rotation is special there by Southern. And Rasco gets the three-point bucket. Really disrupting the ball handlers. Oh, traveling. And that's when you hate to see kind of an unforced error there. Coming into the ball game, Asia Wheeler for Alcorn State University. And for Southern University, they will bring in Raven White as well as Kayla Watson. Yeah, they apply a lot of pressure, exerting a lot of energy. Keep players rotated in the game to keep them fresh here early on. Kyrtis Clark with the basketball, and we have a stoppage of play. 
I don't think the shot clock started moving. It was still at 30 there. You take a look at uh, Kierlis Clark. She's averaging 13 points per game. Played 18 games for Southern University. Nice transition. That is Rasto up, and she gets the three-point bucket. Nice inside-outside game. Feed the ball into the post. Find the open shooter on the perimeter. Alcorn able to connect. Nine to eight. Alcorn making a little bit of a comeback here. The six seed making it happen. Nice inside pass. Shot is up. No good by Raven White. Here comes Alcorn trying to take the lead. Controlling the basketball. Obio. Rasco will drive. Now inside to Mitchell, and that's going to be going the other way. Yeah, would have been good execution there, uh, but didn't pull up in time off the penetration, and Southern draws the charge. Coming into the ball game now for Southern University is Tynesha Mitchell, the junior from South Haven, Mississippi, just on the border there of Memphis, Tennessee border. Good program up there in South Haven. This is what Alcorn likes to do, apply that full court pressure, but Southern kept the ball in the middle of the court, didn't have any problems with it that time, and a little, little disagreement on the call there. Thought maybe a charge, but it's going to be a block. That's going to be a foul coming up on Kyrtis Clark, her first personal. Yeah, she was still moving. I'll tell you what, Coach, uh, Nate Kilbert not happy with that call. That's generally how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot there, Southern. And that's two more on the board. That basket by Kayla Watson from Amy, Louisiana. And a steal. McWayne with the ball. Don't McWayne drives. That's going to be an offensive foul on McWayne. Coach Carlos Funches asking how did that happen. I mean, these are two teams here, Santoria, that really turn defense in the offense, creating opportunities here. See the turnover there after drawing the charge. Uh, but Southern does a good job of rotating the defense, double teaming, coming away with a lot of steals here. Carrasco has two personal fouls, so she'll have to watch it. Six points for Rasco for Alcorn State University. Eight to nine our score. Eleven eight our score. Nice spin move going in for the shot. Deja Mitchell, and she's going to the line. Yeah, she really played the defense by going the opposite direction of the screen. Nice spin move, caught him off guard. The hoop and the harm. We have a timeout on the floor. 4.44 remaining in the first quarter in this quarterfinal game. There you see Armani McWayne with the bucket. And Southern University also dialing up from long distance. 11-10, our score, Southern on top. Right there you see head coach Carlos Funches, along with Marjorie Cotton, Adrian Sanders, Jeremy Bonin, TJ Pugh, Chris Wright, the coaching staff from Southern University. And Coach Funches, of course, was the assistant coach to head coach Sandy Pugh for many years before Coach Pugh went over to Prairie View a and University. And, you know, when you look at what Coach Funches has done with the program, just continue the success. And now Nate Kilbert, he's been around the swag for a long time. Of course, he was a, a head coach at Mississippi Valley, Arkansas Pine Bluff, and now Alcorn State University. Him and his wife have been coaches and administrators in the SWAC for years. Man, after, after yesterday's discussion, man, with the, with the Hall of Fame husband and wife connection from Alabama State, it is truly a family affair in the SWAC coaching ranks in, in many regards, Santori. Absolutely. And Alcorn gets the ball back here, tied at 11 with 444 remaining. Here in this first quarter of play. Hey, that Southern defense, man, already produced four steals. Uh, just up by one floor. Actually tied up now, but it's been a great game. Both teams shooting well from the floor as well. Three-pointer on the way, and that shot no good by Nia McAlphia. And here comes Southern University. And a steal by McAlphia. McAlphia will drive. Has problems handling the ball. And she will get it off to her teammate, Wheeler. Jump ball, and possession goes to Southern University. Southern University really creating a lot of turnovers. Yeah, they blitz uh, the, 
the ball right there with the double team forcing the bad pass, but look at their ability to recover here on the other end. Southern with the basketball. 11-11 is our score. This game is going to come down to who can protect the basketball. Oppor opportunistic defenses on both sides. Metcalf with the basketball gets it to Watson, and now a three-pointer on the way up and good by Kimsey. Yeah, that was wide open. That's her second three-pointer of the ball game. 14 to 11 is our score, with 3:48 remaining here in the first quarter play. Santoria Black, along with Tolly Carr, bringing you today's quarterfinal action. Nice little up and under move. That time, Kayla Odio. And Kayla down in the forest, but not intimidated. Finishing strong at the hoop. And got a substitution coming in for Southern University. And coming in the ball game, Genovia Johnson. Kayla only 5 2, but Santoria took it all the way to the cup there. Johnson averaging 13 points a game. Full court pressure from Alcorn. Another three point opportunity here by Kinsey. This one off the mark, but she gets the rebound. She goes in for the shot. No, and out of bounds, it goes back to Alcorn State. If you take a look at day one of the tournament, especially on the women's side, everything was pretty much chalk. You, you kind of saw what was going on. Alabama State winning, then Jackson State. No problem with Mississippi Valley. Now you get into where, you know, now you can get into some matchup problems here. Yeah, th this is the meat sandwich portion of the women's tournament. We had, we had some great bun action yesterday. We're down into the meat of that sandwich now here. And that's going to be an offensive foul charged to Alcorn State University. And that foul is going to be on Obillo. And Obillo, that will be her first personal foul. But I'm really impressed with the intensity of both teams, uh, the way they've come out, how they're scrapping on both ends of the court. Uh, really fast pace for both teams. No one needed to get warmed up here. They came out ready to go from the opening tip. Controlling the basketball is Chloe Fleming, and she draws a double team. Boy, Alcorn is all over her on defense. And they kind of bait her. Not sure. And I tell you what, Genovia <laughs> Johnson just took it herself. Yeah, maybe an extra step there, but no call. So that wasn't exactly a Euro step. <laughs> Now with the ball for Alcorn State University, that's going to be Nia McAlfia. Not a Wheeler. Wheeler goes in for the shot. Nice job. Wheeler can't get it to convert. And a foul coming up on the floor. And it will go back to Southern University. Yeah, one thing I noticed Alcorn doing defensively on that last possession, trying to bait you into that double team. You can see the strong move to the bucket here. Almost going in, not quite. And that should, should be a two-shot uh, two foul. Is now five fouls in the quarter for Alcorn State University. Yeah, and Santori, one thing Alcorn did on the last possession, kind of let you bring the ball across half court. Like, hey, no problem here. And as soon as you cross, jump you with the double team because at that point you can't go backwards anymore. So using kind of the half court is a little bit of an extra defender. You know, one of the things that we know about Alcorn State University is, you know, they're, they're missing one of their top scores. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of their, their leading people. But the other thing that you have to also look at is they don't want that up and down ball game. But look, according to what we've seen so far, they've been able to play with Southern. Yeah, I mean, both teams are, are able to, to put the press on each other and, and, and to a certain degree handle that pressure and has created a lot of uh, transition basketball. Uh, and it's picked up, uh, you know, the tempo, the, the pace of this game. 18-13 our score. 217 remaining in the first quarter. Well, an Alcorn just keeps moving that ball and pressing it down the floor. In time pass, that's going to be Kyrtis Clark. Now outside to McAlfia, no good. And Southern University with the rebound. Two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Kinsey with the basketball. Now she gets it to Fleming. And a nice steal there. This time, Wheeler gets a hold of it, and Wheeler is going to throw it up. That's going to be a blocking foul charge to Southern University. Two shots coming up for Alcorn. To win this game, everything is going to have to be precise because both teams are very active in the passing lanes, very aggressive. No one's just going to let you throw a basic, simple entry pass. Everything is going to have to be with absolute precision out here. 
Asia Wheeler now will shoot a couple of shots here. First shot is up and good. And she nails both. Alcorn looking to pick up full court here again. Oh, and another. Oh, they got Johnson Five. on the push off. Chloe, Flim Chloe Fleming, the sophomore from Borg, Louisiana, getting that foul. Yep, just gave her a little shiver right there. She was sliding along on defense. Southern playing man-to-man -man here. And coming with the ball, it's McAlpia. It goes up for the shot, no good. And Southern with the rebound. McWayne gets it. Now out to Genovia Johnson. Johnson goes in for the shot, no good. And the rebound by Alcorn State. And that's going to be Diamond Hall with the rebound. Great movement. Asia Wheeler going in. Nice fake. Bucket. Yeah, nice patience there. He's the defender fly by and in for the layup. And boy, Alcorn showing a lot of press here. Well, they're ready for the fight here. Again, active in the passing lanes. One minute remaining in the first quarter. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. This has been an up and down game. 18-17. The score, jump ball. Possession goes back to Alcorn. Alcorn is very good for spotting someone who's close to the half court line, close to the sidelines, and immediately, look, jump. Come on, come on. <laughs> she can't go anywhere if we crowd her right here. And they get the turnover. Yes, yeah, Diamond Hall and Asia Wheeler. And that was something that Coach Nate Kilbert was saying, is that once she can't go anywhere, get up right on her. Yeah, and the ability to recognize that and take advantage of it paid off for all four. Diamond Hall with the basketball. Oh, she, Obio with the basketball. Obio looking to her left. Now she'll take the paint. Pass to Diamond Hall. Back to Obio. Shot from just inside the three-point line. Up no good. Ball tipped. It goes back to... Oh, it goes to Alcorn. And... Now here comes... Watkins in the ball game for Alcorn State University. 25 seconds remaining here in the first quarter of play. Asia Wheeler will inbound the basketball for Alcorn State. And she gets it in to Kyrtis Clark. Clock will just take her time. A four-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Yeah, they're going to dribble this one out here. Go in the final five seconds here to make your move. Tight defense play. Kyrtis Clark gives it up. Now she gets it back. She goes in, jump ball again, and goes back to Southern. Good defense there by Southern. Tiring up. Not even able to get the shot off. Couldn't hold on to the dribble on the crossover. Yeah, that was great defense. And now five seconds remaining here in the first quarter play. Here is Genovia Johnson. She goes in for the shot. No good. And that's the end of the first quarter with the score. 18-17. The six seed in Alcorn State University making some noise. We'll take this time out. As you see, number 14, Obillo going in hard to the bucket. 18-17. Back after this. You did that, Peloton. Until next time. Whew. Carlos Funches, the head coach at Southern University and uh, 1991 college slam dunk champion. The year that, uh, of course, he won the slam dunk championship, he actually was playing for ULM under head coach Mike Vining and that's well, he's one of the reasons why Mike Vining when he was coaching didn't allow fruit in the locker room anymore he ate a piece of fruit at halftime Duke had a five-point lead going into the halftime locker room he ate some fruit he had an upset stomach for the rest of the game so coach Vining said no more fruit in the locker room Santoria you are a wealth of knowledge and a treasure here <laughs> I forgot that he was a college slam dunk champion until uh, they, uh, the truck brought it up. And then I remember the story behind Mike Vining when he retired, as a matter of fact. Carlos Funches talked very fondly of Mike Vining 
and of course, uh, graduate of ULM. Santoria, I forgot all of 1991, man. I got to <laughs> hang out with you more. And we got to find out what dunk he pulled out of the bag. I'm going to be on YouTube tonight, Three, back in the hotel. 360, I think. A 360. Yeah. Wow. He might still be good for a 180 now. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good player at uh, ULM. Carlos Funches with bunches of hops. Alcorn State gets the ball out to uh, uh, Rasco and Southern with the rebound. Yeah, one thing I'm watching here on the stat sheet, steals and turnovers. Pretty much even, just like the score. I think whoever wins in that department might be going on to face Alabama State, but still lots of action to go here today. Bunches. Trying to get to the uh, NC2A tournament. Alcorn State University trying to stand in his way. Nice, easy bucket there. Johnson and is asking, where was the rotation? <laughs> I needed a little help there, and I didn't find it. Curtis Clark with the bucket. And it's now 19-18, Alcorn on top now. Nine minutes remaining, and that's going to be a foul. And Asia Wheeler gets the foul for Alcorn State. A little aggressive on the reach there. Southern University uh, up in this ball game early. Seven zip and Alcorn has just battled back. Three pointer on the way, good. Yeah, Alcorn took just a second to get in sync on offense, and then they turned up that defensive pressure, which is why we have ourselves a two point game right now. Armani McWayne for three, and she now has seven points. Ball goes out of bounds back to Alcorn State. We talk about steals and turnovers. Both teams with five steals right now. And turnovers are mounting up as well as you see the foul there. Eight turnovers for Alcorn, nine for Southern. Three-pointer on the way. Found by Watkins, and it's rebounded by Southern University. In the ball game for the Lady Jaguars, Moore. Nice fake by Johnson. Kicks it back out. Another three-pointer on the way. No good. Getting the rebound is Moore. She can't hit the shot, but a foul coming up. Yeah, good penetration by Johnson. Drive and kick. Shot wasn't good, but Southern able to clear the offensive glass there. Get it back up and on the way to the free throw line. Deja Mitchell with the foul. Only a 50% shooter on the year. One more shot. I think she even had to laugh at herself there. <laughs> <laughs> she drew air. She looked like, ooh, I don't know what I was thinking about. Misses the second one. So over two at the line. 8-14 remaining in the half. Southern switching on the screen, playing man-to-man -man here. Good! Blocking foul against Southern. Man, talk about putting your body on the line. That foul is going to go against Moore. That'll be her first personal. Oh, both hands up on the layup. No way to break or fall, but rewarded with the bucket and the foul. And Watkins will go to the free throw line. Free throw is up and good. Yeah, Watkins 60% on the year from the free throw line, but able to get it to go there. We have a timeout on the floor. Now Alcorn back up 22 to 21. 802 remaining here in the first half of play. Southern coming into this game 11 and 4 overall. We'll take this timeout back after this. Twenty twenty two twenty one. 21 Alcorn State University on top. Of course, that is Nate Kilbert, 18 seasons as a head coach in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Of course, uh, he has been around this conference 
between Arkansas Pond Bluff, Mississippi Valley, now Alcorn State University. This is his first year at Alcorn. And, you know, I, I had a chance to ask him, I said, you know, look, you've been around the SWAC a long time. You know, what is it that you really loved about this? He says he really loves being able to mold young ladies and young kids, be able to show them that there's more than life than just basketball, but also how to be disciplined and play as a team. Yep, definitely. He's a valuable asset to the SWAC. I'm sure he's hoping to make his stay here in Birmingham, do some more teaching and molding. Absolutely. For a few more days. That foul is going to be against Alcorn State. It's going to be Kaylin Watkins. That'll be her first personal. A couple of free throws here for Southern. First free throw is up and good. And he's been around long enough to know how to work the officials to make his case and try to set himself up for a favorable call later in the game. And Kinsey with a couple of free throws for Southern University. Full court press, but all for him getting by by going over the top, but then turning it over after beating the press. With the ball now for Southern University is Metcalf. Nice fake by McWayne. And she stepped on the inline. And it goes back to Alcorn State. That pass would have got there just a second earlier when McWayne was in the corner. She might have got a good shot at a three, but just a ooh, millimeter of the toe right along the baseline. Curtis Clark now coming back into the contest for Alcorn State University. And that one's a little bit out of the reach for Tajane Wright. Well, are they going to say Southern touched the ball? It's going to be all corn ball. It should be at least. Yeah. It didn't look like Wright touched the basketball. Wright, a five, or I should say a 5'9 sophomore from Brooklyn, New York. Three-pointer on the way, up and good by Curtis Clark. She had just a sliver of space, and that's all she needed to pull the trigger. Right, it's going to stay here with Southern. Clark already has 10 points for Alcorn State. He's weaving through the lane. The pass was a little low, but deflected. And that's going to be a blocking foul coming up against Alcorn State. Yeah, she was still moving her feet there. Wasn't set in her position. See it here, sliding, yeah. sliding. Brasco picks up that foul. And that'll be three on her. Southern now with the basketball. Watson controlling. Right side. And that's Metcalf shot up and good. Yeah, that's hard to guard there. That's Dribble penetration and step back on the jumper. And for Metcalf, I believe that was her first bucket of the ball game. Shot clock was winding down. She had a sense of urgency, had to get something up, and she got it to go. And that's going to be a travel. travel. And Southern switching on all of these screens, which is making it hard for the Alcorn players to find the lane to the basket. Genovia Johnson as well as Raven White coming in for Southern. Asia Wheeler coming in for Alcorn State. 25 up. 5.56 remaining here in this first half of play. Santoria Black, Tali Carr bringing you the uh, what third quarterfinal game on the women's side. Kinsey stuck. Pressure from Alcorn. They are everywhere on the perimeter, but picking up the foul there. 
And that's going to be on Asia Wheeler. Second personal. And Southern has to take care of the basketball because Alcorn is trying to bait them into where they want the ball to be so they can execute that double team. Coach Nate Kilbert does not like that call. They're just having a little conversation. You know, look, I was an official for three years in high school. I, I do not that, – that is a difficult job. And as you keep going on up in, uh, in the ranks, it gets even more difficult. You must love punishment, Santori. I did for about three <laughs> years. <laughs> Start, started out in junior high and then went to high school. Well, to be a referee, man, you, you, just, you just love having a hard go at it, huh? Oh, it's rough. <laughs> I had to uh, – and still the services of uh, a bodyguard, Harold, Harold Cooper from the SWAC. <laughs> Actually, he was a dean of officials in the SWAC, uh, basketball and football, over 30 years of experience, and uh, kind of helped me out along the way. After three years, I was done, though. I'll tell you a story about the funniest thing. One of my friends who's a referee said he heard from the stands. I'll tell you the next dead ball. And it goes out of bounds back to <laughs> Southern University. So, so my friend's a referee. I, I asked him, I said, what's the worst thing you ever heard? He said, during the timeout, I was getting some water. And a lady in the stand says, I hope you choke on every single drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> it is not an easy job. I know that. Not and for the thin skin. Genovia Johnson finally gets it over the timeline to Raven White. Now to Kinsey. She goes up, can't hit the shot. Rebound coming down to Fleming. The pace of this game from the very start has just been frenetic on both ends by both teams. Bounce pass, three-pointer on the way up, no good. And it stays with Southern University. Kinsey tried that three-pointer, and it just came off the uh, iron a little bit funny there. Alcorn touched it last. You see a shot of Wright, the uh, so uh, sophomore from Brooklyn. And you have to be conditioned to be on either one of these teams because they are absolutely getting at it defensively and offensively, both teams, Southern and Alcorn. Johnson looking, and that's going to be an offensive foul. See that again. Ah, little push. That's a play on in, in many areas of basketball. McAlfey with the basketball. Now Curtis Clark out to three, a three-pointer coming up. No good. Goes out of bounds back to Sub University. 429 remaining here in the first half. Diamond Hall coming back into the ball game for Alcorn State University. That pressure here. Southern with the ball in the middle of the court along the sideline here. Deflected is going to be staying with Southern. Well, Alcorn really doing a great job on defense, pressing the ball. It's their natural instinct. You can just see how well they executed it. It's a part of what they do. It's a part of their program. And once again, a great job by Alcorn on defense. Ball is on the floor. Diamond Hall picks it up. Gets it out to Asia Wheeler. Wheeler looking. Passed it out to McAlfee. Now back to Wheeler. Wheeler goes up and can't hit the shot. Ball in the air and brought down finally by Southern University. Watson coming down with it. Shot up, no good. Goes out of bounds and back to Southern. I, I think you could have called either way and probably wouldn't have gotten an argument here. No. <laughs> they both dove for the ball. <laughs> it looks like they both kind of knocked it out right at the same time. 27-25, Southern on top. 344 remaining here in the first half of play. Now coming in is Metcalf, 5'8 junior from South Haven. 5'6 uh, junior. Had a stoppage of play. That's going to be an offensive foul. Raven White going to pick that one up. 
I mean, it's just a testament to how tough this Alcorn defense is to draw fouls like they're doing. You have to be in position, feet set, get to the spot before the offensive player does. That's exactly what happened there. Shot up by Curtis Clark. Good. Immediately after the score, Alcorn picks right back up full court. 27-27. Tie ball game. Just waiting for the <laughs> ball handler to pick up the dribble so they can blitz the double team, but Johnson has an answer. Well, Genovia Johnson really doing a great job. And she gets... The bucket, she's got 13, she's averaging 13 points a ball game. And if you watch her play, she's smiling the entire time. She's smiling on offense, she's smiling on defense. She just enjoys playing the game. Johnson now has eight points in the contest. Traveling Southern basketball. I mean, if you look at all the resistance, all the pressure that's out there, uh, it might not be an enjoyable experience for a lot of people. That's a lot of stress on that court right now. But oh, Johnson yeah. has been smiling the entire time. But the more stressful it seems watching it, the more she smiles. <laughs> and almost a turnover. Johnson picks it up. And there is a turnover. Going down the floor, trying to find Curtis Clark. Goes in, foul coming up on Southern. At some point, a, a flaw is going to be exposed between both teams. But they are delivering punches and counter punches, and it's been that way really since the first few minutes of this ball game. Alcorn State started off a little bit slower than Southern, but since then, man, this has been as evenly played and as good of a ball game as we've seen all week here in Birmingham. Got a couple of shots coming up here for Kyrgyz Clark. First one is up and good. One more opportunity at the line. Shot up and good. They're going to need all the free throws. And that could be the, the final stat. We'll have to put a bookmark there, but they are doing everything else equally as well. It could come down to something as small as that, which often happens as we see the three there in the corner and evenly contested basketball games. Three-pointer by Amani McWayne. Kyrgyz Clark is uh, averaging 71% at the free throw line. Pretty good free throw shooter. And she's going to take another one at the top of the key. No good. Ball tip and it finally comes down to the Lady Jacks. Oh, Ooh, that's travel. travel. Yep. Good call. And Alcorn lost to Southern both times during the regular season. We, we've talked before about how hard it is to beat a team three times in a row. And uh, Alcorn has some determination. The second game between the two was fairly close or the first game was fairly close, but the second game, uh, Southern had their way with Alcorn, winning that one 72 to 46. First game was just a six point win for Southern. And there's going to be a foul coming up on Johnson. Not happy about that call. So now coming in for Southern University, that's going to be more. Free throws critical. You need all of them, even this early in the game. Haven't even got to the second half, but man, such back and forth action and Southern up by three. Alcorn needs to keep pace here at the free throw line. First free throw is up and good. One more free throw. That one's good as well. Great form. All net. More pressure. 
Where's the release valve? There it is in the middle. She's not your ball handler. That's going to be a 10 second violation. Back to Alcorn. 32 31 Southern. 120 remaining here in the first half. And another turnover there by Southern. And that defense, it just simply wants to dictate where you put the ball so then they can get you in trouble. And that's exactly what happened there. Diamond Hall with the basketball and out of Asia Wheeler. Wheeler goes in for the uh, bucket. No good. Ball tipped out. Southern basketball. She got away with a little push off there. A little bit of a push. But sometimes with Alcorn, what you see is the open spot that they give you in this trap is where they want you to be in the first place. There's a non-ball handler. They're going to let her keep it. And here they're going to try to force the double team, even a triple team here. And the ball is on the floor. Jump ball, Southern basketball. Well, Alcorn is really putting on the pressure. If Southern gives the ball to their center in the middle of the court, Alcorn's fine with that. She's not going anywhere with it. And then as soon as the guard has the ball, boom, let's pounce. Curtis Clark now has the basketball. Under a minute now remaining in the first half. They're just letting the time go down. 42 seconds remaining, first half. Nine seconds now remaining on the shot clock. Here it is Clark driving. We'll take the shot. It's going to be a travel. Yep. Hate to see that. Now, you are, uh, well, should say, uh, you, you would think that, you would think that you would try to get the ball and maybe work a little bit more, but you only had about four or five seconds left on the shot clock. And so now you got got... Uh, Southern with the basketball, they have about a five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Well, game clock. Yep, so they can't wind it all the way down here, but that's going to totally offset everything down here with this foul. Diamond Hall with the foul. That's her second personal. Armani McWayne going to the free throw line. Tell you what, the guards for Alabama State, which their women's team appears to be in the stands watching this game. I know they're taking a lot of mental notes as they watch the pressure that both teams are applying to one another. And Alcorn uh, really has stepped up their defensive pressure just to tick more here in the last few minutes. You know, when uh, McWayne was recruited out of Ruston High School, one of the things that Coach Pugh was extremely uh, impressed with was the grit that she had on that basketball team. And I remember when she was elementary junior high school playing for the Rustin Red Storm as an AAU ball. And a near steal by Alcorn with 15 seconds left and now they can run the clock out. Boy, Southern can get a big bucket here to extend that lead a little more. Nice, nice. dump off there. And that's going to be Raven White with the bucket. Two seconds left. Here's Kyrgyz Clark and she can't get it off. End of the first half, 36-31, Southern getting a little bit of a lead going into the halftime locker room as it's been close. Championship week continues here on ESPN, Alcorn State and Southern at the half, five-point deficit for the Lady Braves. The Epson Eco Tank. Just fill and chill. Available at. Back at Bartow Arena here at halftime, Southern University, the three seed on top of Alcorn State, 36 to 31. And one of the reasons why Southern is able to go into this halftime lead was the effectiveness of them being able to shoot the long ball. Yeah, you know, Alcorn State's been applying a lot of pressure, but anytime on a possession where Southern has been able to defeat that pressure and then get into the half court, the Alcorn defense is off balance because they devoted so many people to the double and triple team, and they've been able to find a open spot there. As we see, the bank is open here today, and then right there in the corner, you get it to go. So Southern finding uh, opportunistic spots there whenever they can get past that Alcorn trapping pressure defense. And you can see Alcorn really coming to the inside, and that's what's freed everybody up. They've got some tremendous spacing, and I think that's one of the things about this Southern University team. They were up early 7 to nothing, 
Alcorn making a run, and this game was actually tied. One-point lead here or there. Southern making a little bit of run towards the end of that first half just because of taking advantage of a couple of turnovers on the other side. Look, it's only a five-point game. In any other basketball game, you say five points. Oh, man, this is anybody's game. But it has been so nip and tuck in such a tightly contested game, and especially with this defensive pressure. A five-point lead here between Southern and Alcorn almost feels like a ten-point lead in a normal game because things have just been that razor close. You know, and I don't know really what – people may have thought of when you went into this game between Southern and Alcorn if this was going to be somewhat of a blowout because it's a 3-6 or whatever the case is. Nothing like that. When we talked to a couple of people before the game, there were some matchup problems that you could see brewing a little bit. And any time a team turns defense into offense like Alcorn State is able to do, and any time a team has the wherewithal to get in a full court press after each made basket, they can present problems for anybody. Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, this is a very good ball game. We've seen uh, a number of different things. We've seen Johnson. We've seen McWayne on the Southern University side that has ex done extremely well. Curtis Clark on the Alcorn side has really stepped up as well. 36-31, Southern University will be back. 15. Learn how at retoolyourschool.com. We're powered by purpose. The 2021 SWAC Basketball Tournament on ESPN is presented by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. By Cricket Wireless, smile, you're on Cricket. And by Credit Versio, get your credit score up to where it should be with Credit Versio. Visit creditversio.com. Back at Bartow Arena, quarterfinal action between Southern and Alcorn State University. Southern on top, 36 to 31 here at halftime. Time to take a look at the uh, brackets here for the tournament. Of course, two teams, one on the men's side, one on the women's side. They'll have their tickets punched to San Antonio and Indianapolis. First of all, here on the women's side, two games already in the books from yesterday, starting with the top half of the bracket. Jackson beat Mississippi Valley 70 to 47. They will face the winner of Grambling and Alabama A&M, which is coming up tonight at 6.30 Eastern right here on ESPN3. And then at the bottom part of that bracket, Alabama State, they've already advanced. They beat Texas Southern yesterday, 85-69. to They will play the winner of this game Friday at noon. So those are the games coming up uh, and where we are with the women's bracket. Alabama State doing some scouting here. They're in the building, and they are seeing a very exciting game. And right now, I don't think they could have any idea to make a prediction about who they might play because this one could still go either way between Southern and Alcorn State. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the men's bracket now. And, uh, you know, on that side, two games pretty much went chalk yesterday. Prairie View beat Mississippi Valley 91-64, to 30-plus point performance in that ball game. And then, of course, uh, Jackson, they beat Arkansas Pine Bluff 74-62. Prairie View will play the winner of Grambling and Southern. Grambling and Southern will play tonight at 9.30 Eastern. Jackson, they will play the winner of tonight's game between Texas and Alcorn. That game is at 3 Eastern, immediately following this game on ESPN3. So that takes you to the brackets up to date on the women's and the men's side. Now let's take a look at the regular season standings presented by Cricket Wireless. Smile, you're on Cricket. And uh, the final standings, of course, you know, look, number one seed, Jackson State University on the women's side, 14-1 and one overall, Alabama State 14-3. and three. But you take a look at the two teams, Southern and Alcorn, you look at the records and you think they're far apart, but when you really look at it, they really aren't. No, and, and from what I've seen from Alcorn State, they look better than their record uh, indicates here in the final standings, the way they're playing. We talked about Southern yesterday. I kind of labeled them as a sleeper team because of all of the attention that Jackson State and Alabama State were getting. Uh, so Southern definitely a team to watch, but boy, they have their hands full with Alcorn State. Yeah, absolutely. So you look at uh, Jackson, that number one seed, of course, they're trying to get to the tournament and we'll see what happens there. But uh, I tell you, halftime, 36-31, Southern on top. We'll take this time out. More quarterfinal action coming up right after this. Told you.
Back here at Bartow Arena here in Birmingham, Alabama, Santoria Black along with Tali Carr bringing you quarterfinal action here in the uh, tournament. Southern University on top, 36-31. And, you know, let's take a look at some of those halftime highlights of this game. And, look, no shortage of defense starting with Southern University. Nothing coming easy in the passing lanes. You see Southern here with the steal turning it into a bucket. And then from outside, the bank is open. Whenever you can find the hole with the nice Euro step there, you better take advantage of it because it will close down soon. Johnson, baseline. Nice little floater there. She had a big first half. And look at this. Nothing easy. <laughs> just a spin, a screen just to get an open shot. And from downtown, these three-pointers might make the difference in who wins and who loses this game. If, they're, if you're open, take it and make it count. And you can tell right here that when they can, they'll try to slash inside the paint with their guard play. But Southern University comes back on the other side. Genovia Johnson driving and doing a little damage herself. Look at her. She's smiling. She loves this stuff, man. She loves it. Let's take a look at the Cricket Wireless halftime stats. Smile, you're on Cricket. She was smiling. She was on Cricket on the <laughs> game there. All court State, 44% uh, from the field. Southern. Uh, just a bit better at 52%. We talked about those uh, three-point shots. It's not like Alcorn is, is doing so bad. They're 50%, but Southern just a tick better, four for seven. Uh, rebounding, that's a key sh uh, stat to look at. Southern with the advantage on the boards and turnovers. Uh, Southern with a few more, and that is a direct result of that Alcorn State defense. And we're just about ready for the start of the second half of play. And Southern University will get the ball to start things off here in the second half. Leading the way for Southern University in the point area, Armani, McW Armani McWilliams, 12 points. And for Alcorn State, here to Clark, 14 points in the game. And right away, there is Genovia Johnson driving, shooting, and getting a bucket. Whenever Johnson sees an opportunity on the baseline, that's one of her favorite moves. She's going to take it. Right here, she sees the defender playing her to her left, so she goes to the right. And one of the things you just saw Coach Gilbert talk about is turn around, put a hand in her face. Free throw up and good. Southern University turning all court over with pressure of their own here. Nice job on the block. Diamond Hall gets the rebound. And a foul coming up. Great fake by Deja Mitchell. Getting more up in the air. See here, Alcorn had turned the ball over but responded with a good block and quickly getting out into transition. Moore picks up that foul. She shoots it quickly at the line. Some people take their time with the with the little ritual. She kind of gets it and gets it up there. 39-31, eight-point lead for Southern University. And now a seven-point lead. One for two at the line, 9.34 remaining here in this third quarter of play. All going more full court. McWayne, nice pass inside to Moore, and that's going to be a foul coming up against Alcorn on the floor. And if you can get over the top of that full court pressure, you're going to find someone open because they dedicate that double team in the backcourt. Southern doing a good job there. Diamond Hall picks up her third personal foul. Shot up, no good. And Alcorn comes away with it, but it goes out of bounds before they can secure it. Yeah, just trying to dribble before uh, Desmond Hall. I mean, Hall there trying to dribble before she really got her control of the basketball and it gets away from her. Diamond Hall. Southern University will inbound and a long pass in to Genovia Johnson. These one of those possessions here where the half court from the start 
not a chance for Alcorn to apply any full court pressure. The bucket and the foul. These are possessions that Southern has to take advantage of. That foul is going to be on Obio. That's her second personal. Yep, just a little bit of space coming off that screen. And Johnson knows what to do from that point on. Shot up no good on the free throw. Thirteen points for Johnson. Alcorn with the basketball. Now Kiedis Clark has control. Clark took a three-pointer. It was partially blocked. <laughs> they, were blo they were boxing out. They didn't realize the shot was blocked. Rolled right off the bat. And it will go the other way in Southern University. Great job on defense. Yeah, just a really tough man-to-man. -man. They're playing just a finger on the ball there enough to throw it off track. And it's going to be a shot clock violation. Kinsey doing a good job getting a hand up. And now she has the basketball. And now she loses it. Ball is on the floor, and it's tied up. When you're out there, there's an Alcorn defender in front of you, behind you, beside you. Your head has to be on a swivel. We have a timeout on the floor with 8.25 remaining in the third quarter of play. 41-32 Southern stretching out that lead to nine points. We'll take this timeout. We'll be right back. Academy Store. You can see fans, uh, it's the Alabama State University women's basketball team enjoying a little popcorn. That's the freshman. Uh, of course, uh, playing for Coach Free Freeman Jackson, and they say the popcorn is pretty good here. And you can see they're enjoying every team we've seen. They've had some popcorn. Hey, back in the media room, man, I'm I'm all over the kettle corn. I'm I'm a sweet and salty type of guy. I got to get some. I didn't know they had any back there. Really? No, I did not. I'm, I'm the rookie on the crew, and I found the food first. You're the old vet. You you were supposed to be showing me these things. You know, Victoria. I just I don't know what I was thinking about yesterday. I just didn't even go back to look and see if there was food back there. Well, James came in here with pie and didn't share it with anybody. So we, <laughs> we have all sorts of things happening with the the smorgasbord of, of media food here, or lack thereof. File coming up on Southern University, and that's going to be charged to Fleming. Her second personal. Yeah, Southern is just slowly creeping, creeping almost a, a 10 point lead here. That's a travel. And the beginning of this third period is similar to what we saw at the beginning of the first, uh, which is Alcorn kind of slow to get it going offensively, and Southern remaining sharp. Southern was working cross court pass, wide open shooter there. Good that's, vision. That's Amani McWayne with the three pointer. It's that ball reversal found the hole in the all court defense. Hasn't been many holes in that defense, but they found one there. She's already hit her average. She's got 15 points now. Near steal. That just disrupts your offense there. Here is Clark with the ball. She is defended by. Johnson, it's going to be a foul coming up. Johnson a little dismayed as she ran through that screen there. We'll watch it again. Here's the pick. and eh. I can see that. <laughs> I, I would have been okay either way. Foul, okay. By, by the letter of the law, it was a foul. If, if they would have played on, I, I wouldn't have screamed bloody murder over here either. Watson coming into the game now for Southern University. And a near steal. McWayne on the floor. Ball still on the floor. And finally, Kyrgyz Clark has the ball. I mean, it just takes you out of what you're trying to run and you end up with a desperation shot like that. Uh, that Southern defense wasn't credited with the steal there, but that was a major disruption to what Alcorn was trying to do offensively. McWayne with the foul. See the fight for the rebound there. 
going back up. A little contact along. All corner will get the ball back, and McWainer, that was her coach in AAU ball. Said that he was really hoping that she could get that D1 scholarship, and she has done well. Great investment into his daughter's life. I know he had a lot of fun there coaching your children. Mm -hmm. Going to be Metcalf gets the foul. This is a way for the Alcorn offense to get back into this game here, trip to the free throw line. If they can convert here. Now this lead is 12 They got up to 12. Yeah. yeah. First one. Ooh. Throws off the rim. One more. And misses both. Yeah, those start to add up on you. A near steal by Diamond Hall. Moore with the basketball. She's in a little bit of trouble. Finally gets to Kinsey, and she gets the bucket. Yeah, Southern able to respond there. That's all for nearly had the Lady Jags trapped up. Good offense. Nice oh. pass on the inside. Oh. Can't convert. Ball goes out of bounds. Back to Alcorn. It doesn't get any easier than that. Falling into the spot where the defense rotated from, but you have to convert on the layup. Wide open. Nice pass, but the bunny just hopped in a different direction. Timeout taken with 6-14 remaining. Alcorn takes a timeout. 46-32 Southern University on top. Braves trying to make some things happen. We'll be right back. Available at... Back here at Bartow Arena here in Birmingham, Alabama. Fans taking in the contest and you know, this lady here, she was a uh, former popcorn eater. She was eating popcorn before we went to the break, and then she put it up. But uh, we're going to talk about Armani McWayne from Southern. Hey, she is leading the way this afternoon with 15 points for the Lady Jags, and she has the touch. You might not want to leave her open anywhere on the court. When she finds opportunity, she takes advantage of it and makes you pay from behind the line. No doubt about that. And uh, 15 points. She's three for three from behind the arc today. She's a shooter. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Been shooting since she was in elementary school. And Alcorn has to retreat all the way in the backcourt in order to get this one. Yeah, Alcorn's only scored one point here in the third, and that was at the free throw line. They've experienced a bit of futility from the floor. And here's a shot up, and oh, just rattled off the rim. Mobile couldn't get it to go, and here comes Southern. And the other thing that doesn't allow them to do, if they don't score, they can't set up their full court pressure. So it's a one-two punch for Alcorn. Shot up by McWayne, no good. Rebound by Southern. That was Raven White, and that shot is good. Once, twice. Three times a lady. She gets the rebound and gets it back in with the trio of attempts. And for Mitchell, I believe that is her third personal. Raven White at the free throw line shooting one. Wide 61% free throw shooter. First free throw up and good. Yeah, great looking form. Easy peasy there at the free throw line. Southern's just going to fall back here and pick up man to man. Nice, nice back pass. Ball. Shot up and good. Great cut, great pass, great second pass on the interior pass there. And finally, Alcorn gets something to go from the field. Deja Mitchell getting that on a nice pass. 
by McAlfia. High post, finds the cutter, and then a little secondary dish for the bucket, but no good at the free throw line. Forty-nine, thirty-four, fifteen-point lead now for Southern University. Just too low there on that entry pass, bad angle, and it just rolls right out of bounds. And now Alcorn will get the ball back here. Five minutes remaining here in this third quarter play. Forty-nine, thirty-four. Yeah, Southern's outscored Alcorn by 10 here in the third. It was just a five-point deficit at the half, but in slow motion offensively for Alcorn. Southern still in man-to-man. Uh, -man. Let's see if we can oh, right, we'll step away from behind. Here comes Southern. Nice steal. And that's Curtis Clark on the steal. She's got the basketball. And a foul coming up on Southern. Three on two break. She keeps it herself, draws the contact, stops the clock, and at the free throw line here. So here the steal from behind. We're going the other way. Yeah, who's open? Who's open? I'll take it myself. Yeah, that, you know, when you look at that last play, probably the reach is, if you'd have stayed right there, you might have gotten a little contact, what have you, but uh, the reach is what got her. 49-34, 15-point lead. But Alcorn's going to have to start hitting some free throws. They cannot continue to leave those opportunities at the line here. Clark, of course, leading scorer for the Lady Bulldogs at Natchez High School. She averaged 19 points a ball game, two-time state champion, earned All-State honors twice, and named All-District and All-Metro teams for four years while she was in high school. Wow. What an athlete. What a student athlete. This is the second. One of two at the line. Southern with the ball. Great pressure. And it looks like that Fleming stepped out of bounds. And that was some great pressure by Alcorn State. And again, Alcorn gives you what they want you to have. Here, take the baseline. The trailing defender was there in case there was going to be a spin back. But step out of bounds on the sideline. It goes to Alcorn. 14-point lead is tipped by Southern, and Alcorn has the ball back. Yeah, Alcorn wanted to kick ball there, but they just let it play on. They maintain position. 418 remaining here in this third quarter of play. Curtis Clark nearly lost the ball out of bounds, recovers. Kinsey now defending her. Shot is up, no good. Ball tipped out of bounds, and it goes back to Southern. Last touch by Alcorn State. And touching that ball last was Deja Mitchell. And this short little stoppage of play and substitution is going to allow Alcorn to set up their full court press, see if they can get some offense out of their defense if they can turn the Jaguars over here. Deja Mitchell comes out of the ball game. Diamond Hall comes in. Deja Mitchell averaging seven points. Six rebounds a game for Alcorn State. And a near steal there. Nice job by Fleming as she draws the foul. That foul is going to be charged to McAlpia. Her first personal of the ball game. Fleming was a little bit frustrated. Teammates just kind of rallied around her. Fleming going to the free throw line to shoot a pair. First one is good. 52% free throw shooter. She nails the first one. They have to lead up to 15 here. And she misses the second one. And it's going to be out of bounds. Off of Southern. Oh, cool. Oh, that's a foul. foul. Wow. Kinsey gets the foul. That's her 
Well, it's, it's a great opportunity for Alcorn. No time off the clock. A chance to get two free free throws here. And then set up your defense again. Yeah, Kinsey, I think that's her third personal. Oh, yeah, just over the back right there. Oh, first free throw up by Angel Wheeler is no good. Second free throw off the back of the iron, no good. Foul coming up against all four. Yep, just a little too much. A little too much contact there, playing it too close. That's going to be against Clark. And going back to the line will be Chloe Fleming. More coming back in the ball game. And this is where she can make up some ground. Oh, off the front of the iron, no good. Yeah, Moore has been a force on the boards as she checks back in. She has seven rebounds for Southern this afternoon. Only two points, but doing her job on the glass. And now Southern University up 51-35. Hawkorn trying to get inside. Diamond Hall going in. Nice job by Diamond Hall. Hey, sometimes you just got to put your head down and punch your way to the basket. That's exactly what she did right there on that play. Hall at four. Has two points now in the ball game. And a steal. And she responds with a block and a steal after the bucket. 3 0 2 break here. Asia Wheeler going in, gets the bucket. Alcorn starting to show some life. Able to set up here. Let's see if Southern has the solution on this possession. Double team in the backcourt, but quickly gets by that one. Shot up and good, and that is Watson with the basketball and getting the shot. Now controlling the basketball will be Obio. Comes around Asia Wheeler, taking the three-point shot up no good. Rebound by McAlfee and gets it out to Diamond Hall for three. Good! Hall has been the offense for Hallcourt. Uh, she's had back-to-back -back buckets here and also getting it done with the steal and the block on the previous possession as well. Shot up, no good. Ball is recovered by McWayne. She goes up for the shot, no good. Moore tried for the rebound. She couldn't grab it. And coming down with the basketball was Fleming. Well, Alcorn really needed that when they were trying to build a little bit of momentum, but a couple of offensive rebounds for Southern. They retain possession. No shot there. And Diamond Hall with the rebound. During her time at uh, Coquitlam County High School in Norman Park, Georgia, she had almost 1,500 points, 762 rebounds as a forward guard. All sets of ball screen here. Good job. McAlfey goes in for the shot and foul coming up for Southern University. Yeah, Hall doing all the things necessary for Alcorn. Creates the space right there. Finding the angle, drawing the foul. Got quite a few changes here. So coming in for Alcorn, Loray Rasco, Bria Broughton. This is an opportunity for Alcorn to get this back down to a single-digit ball game if they can convert a couple of free throws here. Asia Kirkland also coming in. She's a senior from Fresno, California. Hey, and Alcorn is the rebound. And Asia Wheeler gets the bucket. 
You can't draw it up that way, but when it happens, three points out of that possession and more of your full court pressure defense. Back to down to an 18 point lead. 104 remaining third quarter. Wheeler got popped in the face. And there's a little bit of an issue here. There was some uh, push and shoving and a little swinging going on. Asia Wheeler got hit in the face. And then down on the other end, there was a little pushing and shoving between Bria Broaden and Raven White. I think there might be a little bit of concern of whether or not she had any blood there because they can't forward to have that on the court. Uh, we had an issue with that last night. A player uh, struck with the, the knee and we had some blood on the court. Let's take a look at it again. See right there, 42. They were oh, really battling. Just a little, little tussle there. They're doing a little replay right now. See what they come up with, but see it from the up top, fighting for position in the post, and yeah, kind of wrestled her way out of there. Looking for an intentional foul in the backcourt. And I think they're going to say nothing there. something that they needed to check there. Uh, they were over there on the side working with James Crenshaw. Had a chance to work with him on many projects, and now he's over there helping with the replay. Incidental contact in the backcourt. So there's no foul on that. It's going to be incidental contact. And Alcorn has slowly worked their way back here down to an eight-point lead. So now uh, under under 10 points, nice pass underneath to Raven White. Shot up no good. And right there with the rebound is Watson, and she gets the bucket. Well, missed opportunity from all four. Back up to a 10-point lead. Not able to get that defensive rebound. Southern makes them pay. Brasco now with the ball, 28 seconds. 15 now on the shot clock. Bounce pass, and oh. Going to be a turnover. Nice positioning by Southern. Yeah, it was a good cut, but that pass wasn't quite on the money. Not able to bring it in, and Southern comes away with the basketball. Metcalf with the basketball. Eight seconds remaining, and Southern will play for the last shot, 55-45. Metcalf going in. Shot up good as the clock expires. A little mini dagger there by the Lady Jacks. Well, Metcalf gets a big shot. As time expires here in the third quarter, we go to the final quarter. One of these teams goes on to the semifinals. The other one goes home. 57-45, Lady Jags on top of Alcorn State. More popcorn being enjoyed here at the uh, Bartow Arena in Birmingham, Alabama as we start the fourth quarter. 57-45, the number three seed on top of Alcorn, the sixth seed. And we got some of our popcorn down here. On I don't know what it is about this stuff. You know. <laughs> but this, I don't, we're going to have some of this after the game because this stuff, it must be magic. Hey, we have, we have to save that for tonight. Grambling Southern men, that, that is a popcorn affair all the way. Get your popcorn <laughs> ready because that will be a heck of a game. Mini Bayou Classic on the hardwood. And a steal here. Up, no good. Rebound by Alcorn. Throw back Moore has it. She gets the bucket. Hey, another rebound and two points for Moore. Southern fans hoping for a double dip today if the women hold on for a win here. Of course, nothing would please a Southern fan more than to beat Grambling in anything. Checkers, oh. basketball, shuffleboard, you name it. Let me tell you, you can play checkers, you can play anything. Spades, big whiz, dominoes. If you have Grambling beat Southern, 
for Southern B. Grambling. Their fans are ecstatic. And we'll have our, our chance to see which fans will uh, enjoy that the most a little later tonight. 9.31 remaining in the game, 21 on the shot clock. All right, this is do or die time for Alcorn. They've got to make a push offensively to get back into this game. Yeah, they're down 14 right now. Brasco with the basketball. And that's a foul. It's going to be offensive against Alcorn, I believe. And that's going to be Asia Wheeler. And we saw the Lady Braves make a bit of a mini push uh, there in the midway through and late in the third quarter. But Southern able to finish strong and... It was almost a single-digit lead, but back up to double digits. 9-14 remaining. Southern with the basketball. Watkins defending the ball. Driving the shot up and no good as Watson tried to get the bucket. Rasco now comes on the other side for Alcorn State. That's going to be an off offensive foul. Yep. Cleared that space with the push-off. Foul is going to be on Kalen Watkins. Actually, it was that shoulder. She dipped that shoulder and created that separation. And got a couple of substitutions coming in for yeah. Alcorn State. Diamond Hall coming in. Also, Deja Mitchell coming in. Yeah, I was looking out there to see where Hall was. She was on the bench. She provided the big spark on the offense for Alcorn State in the third period. Uh, if she has anything left in the tank, now is the time with just under nine minutes to go and win in advance, lose, and go, go home. home. It was good that uh, Coach Kilbert getting a couple of his seniors in who don't see a ton of playing time, but they were able to get into the basketball game. And Kirkland was one of those, senior from Fresno. Hall, she had an effect both offensively and defensively uh, during that third period. 8.36 remaining in the game. Here is Moore. Nice little fake on Mitchell. Popped it back out. Three-pointer on the way to Watson. And Kayla Watson nails the three-pointer. Watson was so open. I don't know if you heard it on the broadcast, but she hit her with that. <laughs> I'm right here. Fifty-seven forty-five. now the score. That's going to be a foul coming up against Alcorn again. And it kind of looks like just, just a tad uh, of that energy level. He's slowly starting to leave Alcorn here. They played such a great ball game in the first and second quarters, only down by five points at the half. But that third period was really a turnaround for Southern, able to push that lead up to double digits. Shinovia Johnson back in the ball game, 5'8", sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. And she will control the basketball, defended by Keirdis Clark. 62-45, 17-point lead now for Southern. They really stretch it out. Three-pointer on the way, good! So the winner goes on to take on Alabama State, and we might have a Fort Lauderdale showdown tomorrow. Alabama State has some representation from Fort Lauderdale on their roster as well, so that'll be uh, interesting. Who has the keys to the city there? Absolutely. Well, another three-pointer there by Metcalf, and Alcorn State University now down 20. 7.51 remaining here in this ball game. 65-45 Southern. One get one for just a buck deal. Feed your happy. 65-45, Southern on top. And you see one of the fans just dancing and just having a good time here at the uh, Bartow Arena. Look at that foam, man. That, that looks like a, lo a young Santoria up there getting down. I had no rhythm like that, dude, <laughs> at all. Look, I compared him to you, and he did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deal breaker. Oh, 7.44 <laughs> remaining here in this ball game. Alcorn State University with the ball. Well, they're going to need some uh, Mr. Magic here. Down 20. And this one goes over the head of Deja Mitchell, and it comes now back to Southern University. Still with the opportunity to make something happen defensively here. They are... Applying the pressure, but 
Southern sitting pretty with this 20-point lead here. So they're moving the ball around the perimeter. They just they do not want to rush it right now. Oh no, because they're going to have their hands full if they hold on to win against <laughs> Alabama State. Metcalf gets the bucket. That's going to be a good matchup if that's what it turns out to be. Shot up, no good, and Southern University gets the rebound. Oh, look at that. Wow. You, you should wave your finger after blocking a ball like that. Yeah, you, you, definitely, <laughs> you definitely are going to get the finger to that. No, 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 no. I mean, that is a volleyball Ooh, spike. Man. Moore said not anymore in here. Not anywhere near Birmingham, should you put that up around me. And a foul coming up. She she could have caught that ball. Just she could have just snatched it out of the air. That foul is going to be on Raven White. The wind up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, she needs to get signed up for the volleyball team with that <laughs> spike. I, I saw back here at, at UAB they have a beach volleyball office. Man, they need to get that going at Southern. Shot up and no good. Wild shot up with the rebound and the shot is Deja Mitchell. So they're now with the basketball. Fleming controlling and a turnover. Alcorn has it on the floor. Jump ball and it will go back to Southern University. Well, you have to give it up to Alcorn. Still very sparky out there, diving on the ball. Uh, despite the fact they're down 20, six minutes to go, they are not giving up and leaving it all on the floor quite literally. And now coming back in for Alcorn State will be Watkins. Kalen Watkins, a freshman from Inglewood, California. Inglewood. Mm-hmm. Little stop with your play momentarily. And that's going to be on Deja Mitchell. Yeah, that was great ball movement. Kick out to the perimeter. Maybe had a shot there, but quickly seeing a better opportunity down in the post and just swinging that ball across the court for Southern. Is that five on her? That's going to be five on Raven. Or I should say on uh, Deja Mitchell, that's a big loss. The six-foot redshirt senior from Duluth, Georgia. And she'll walk off the floor. And Alcorn is hoping not for the last time, but they're down 20 here with 5.57 remaining here in this fourth quarter. And we saw Alcorn go on a, a quick run there in the third period. They'll need to rekindle some of that magic here. Got a stoppage because of the shot clock. But the one thing that, that Alcorn can do, if they can score, they can immediately flip into that full court pressure that they gave Southern fits with early in the game, but uh, not quite as much here as of late. And that's what they're talking about on the sideline now. Issue with the shot clock. It appears that it might have been right. Uh, it was, when we started that possession, it was down to 20. Uh, they've adjusted it to 17 right now. Let's see what the final verdict is going to be on the shot clock. Well, it'll be, it'll be uh, Southern's ball side out. So there, there was a foul. It was reset to 20 as it should. All right, so I think we've got it, uh, getting it all straightened out now. Well, we'll take a moment here to really take a look around. It's so good to see fans back in Birmingham. We have a, a, a loud capacity, just under 1,000, but 
Uh, good to see fans here to cheer on their favorite teams at the SWAC tournament. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's the anniversary when sports uh, stopped. It's, you tired a lot of teams, that uh, NBA teams and all of the teams just started uh, getting notices that there was going to be postponements. It's been a long year, Santori. Yep, hard to believe it's been a year since sports kind of uh, stopped. Shot up by Diamond Hall, no good. Boy, she needed that bucket. 67-47, 5.28 remaining. Double team, and here comes Fleming. Fleming tried to get the bounce pass to Raven White. And the shot is up and no good. Watson was trying to get the bucket for Southern, and now Diamond Hall will get the ball back. Hall got the rebound, has the ability to bring it up court. She's almost like a, a point forward out there. Guard Ford in college, or in high school rather. Nice spin move, and she throws it into the hands of Amani McWayne. Now to Fleming. Southern in no rush here. Genovia Johnson fake 15 foot jumper up no good. Ball recovered. Obio has the ball inside the paint. It's three people around her and she draws the foul. Did not bother her at all. She still found a way to spin and attempt to get up a shot there as she was fouled. Well, sometimes you look at games like this, Centoria, and you, the stat sheet won't tell the whole story. You may just look and say, oh, okay, Southern just kind of let it wire to wire here, 20-point win. But the first two quarters of this game, man, all State was giving Southern University fits, and it looked like they had just as good of a chance of winning this game as the Jaguars did. Yeah, they really uh, – and that's one of the things is that when you start going down the stretch here, you know, it's uh, what you do – in that middle part to get you going into that second half. Right at the beginning of the second half is where things can really start to uh, either help you or hurt you. And uh, in this case, you know, you're still on 18. You still got 433 left. But, man, this is a uh, this is tough going right now if you're Alcorn State. They're not going to give up as they aggressively double team there in the backcourt. Fleming gets tied up. Coming up next, we've got uh, men's basketball action. Of course, quarterfinal game. Yeah, it's going to be 2 p.m. to say 3 p.m. Eastern, Texas Southern taking on Alcorn. That's a 3-6 game. So Alcorn playing back-to-back -back here. Women and then the men. Three-pointer on the way up, no good. And recovered by Southern University. Getting the ball is Cabrilla Lee, the junior from Lake Worth, Florida. Ball is on the floor. And that's going to be a jump ball. It's going to stay with Southern here. And we have the substitution Metcalf coming to the ball game. You see an Alcorn State University basketball player, or I should say one of the uh, staff members there. Kind of listening to music, checking out phone. You gotta get your, your pregame playlist going, man. You gotta yep. you gotta get get your mind right for the for the task at hand. So what's on your playlist? Oh, you know what, man? It, uh, not to play off of your name, man, but what I've been listening to a lot when I get out and exercise, a little Carlos Santana, man. Really? Yeah, big big fan of of guitarist and uh, Santana's. Where's that? Foul coming up against Alcorn. I think this one's gonna be charged to Watkins. And now Rasco coming in the ball game, the senior from Indianapolis. Genovia Johnson at the line. Kaylin Watkins, the freshman from Inglewood. Majoring in psychology, seven siblings. I don't mean this literally, but when you say Inglewood, I always think Inglewood up to no good. Oh. <laughs> a little, little Dr. Dre there. Yep. As a matter of fact, she's got a birthday coming up March 13th on Saturday, which is Championship Saturday. Oh, man. That would be quite the present. Nice drive shot up no good and no foul call. 
Southern on the break, getting it out. But, oh, just can't haul it in. Yep. It was there. McWayne on the floor. Harlow also on the floor. Zaria Har Harlow, a six-foot freshman from Prairieville, Louisiana. And back in the ballgame for Southern will be Nakia Kinsey. And she'll take out Genovia Johnson. How, how's the crawfish down there in that area of Louisiana? Crawfish is, man, it's good. Man. I'll tell you something. <laughs> Now, we, I, I haven't been a chance to go to South Louisiana, but I know I've, I've had some folks, some of my friends and things who are down there say crawfish is great. <laughs> but we got crawfish in North Louisiana. It's pretty good now. Look at that. That was just awesome nice penetration. Shot. Just weaving into the lane. Climbing Hall. Diamond Hall with the bucket. Southern trying to get it over the timeline and gets it to Cabrilla Lee. Lee takes the baseline, goes in and gets the English. Her first two points of the ball game. Well, he didn't want to go down, but he finally fell for it. And a foul coming up, shot no good. It's going to go on Cabrilla Lee, if I'm not mistaken. So she's got a foul and a bucket here in the game. Diamond Hall coming out of the ball game. 2.58 remaining in the contest. And coming in, Aisha Kirkland, the 5'8 senior from Fresno. So she'll get some time in here. Yeah, I don't know if we'll see Hall again, but she was 3 or 4 from the floor. Played 24 minutes so far. Perfect uh, on her only three-point attempt there. Had six boards and... She was in there putting in some work. Shot up and good. Seven points for Hall tonight, but they were crucial this afternoon in that third quarter as they tried to make a comeback. And a steal. This is the freshman, Watkins, going in and losing the ball. Had All a little help there. The ball back. <laughs> Had a little help there from the defense. It's flying in. We have a timeout on the floor. Nothing comes easy there on that block. 69-53 to score. The 2021 SWAT Basketball Tournament on ESPN is presented by Mountain Dew, official basketball sponsor of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and by Home Depot. Home Depot's Retool Your School is powered by purpose. Vote today at retoolyourschool.com and help upgrade your HBCU. 69-53 is the score. There's Carlos Funches, head coach at Southern University. I wonder what piece of fruit he ate that upset his stomach during that 91 tournament game against Duke. Oh, man, it had to be something uh, citrusy, right? Maybe like, like too much acid? Yeah, well, you know, I'm telling you, I'm interested in seeing about that. Shot is up, blocked. That's right, the sophomore, and she's going to go to the line. Foul coming up. I don't, I don't think I've ever had any fruit disagree with me. If it's bad, you usually know it. <laughs> well, she's saying two from it. Southern, and it's impossible. It's 12. The score table was trying to figure out who the foul was on, and, she, and the official said two, and they were like, well, there's no two out there, and it was 12. First free throw is up and good by Wright. And she hits both. Well, we're at 14, 2.44 to go. A turnover here could make things potentially interesting as we get that, and no. now the bucket, though. 2.36 remaining. 69-55, 14-point deficit for Alcorn State. Alcorn trying to just make something happen, get a turnover, anything. You see Obio trying to just reach inside and get that ball away. Three-pointer all the way by Lee. No good, but a foul on the floor. Kind of interesting here because that was... Both players just going for the ball and 
Rasco with the foul, by the way. And McWayne at the free throw line for Southern. It's all about the position. McWayne shooting 73% from the free throw line. First shot is up and good. One more opportunity at the line. And Southern pulls everybody off the line here. They're just going to get back on defense. And they're hoping this clock will just kind of wind down. And Watkins gets the shot. And there's a timeout on the floor. There's Coach Nate Kilbert and trying to get things together here. Yep, still a 13-point game, 2.07 to go. I mean, you would need a couple of turnovers. Here's the player of the game presented by USAA, the official military appreciation partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And player of the game, Amani is the player of the game from Southern University. And I'll tell you what, had a great game. Amani McWayne just hitting everywhere from the three-point line. Yep, she has shown that all game long, if you leave her the space, she will convert. Nice looking shot, and we talked about it in the first half. Three corners could be the difference in this game, especially when it was a lot closer. They were just turning each other over in steals and turnovers and everything was equal in the game. Uh, but Southern used that three-point shot to kind of pull away a little bit, and then they have kept that margin ever since. Well, there's two minutes and seven seconds in remaining in Alcorn season unless they can make some things happen here pretty fast. Well, we're going to try to make something here on this defensive full court set. A turnover and a quick score. That's what you need right now. Out of bounds, back to seven. You can get a turnover and maybe get a foul in a bucket, a turnover and a three-pointer. You're looking at a 10-point game, and it just it gives you a different feel when you're when you're close to it being a single single-digit deficit. But they've got to do the work to get it done, and they got to do it quickly. Double team there, and that's going to be a foul charge to Alcorn State. I believe they're going to put that on Kaylin Watkins. And that's four on Watkins. And now back to the free throw line. Southern's got everybody back now. Yep, yep. They're, they don't want any chance of a foul here to stop the clock and give Alcorn State, uh, Alcorn, a chance to score while the clock's not moving. So they're going to let them have the rebound if this shot's not good. And they just want this final 206 to go by as quickly as possible. One or two at the line. And here comes Rasco, one of the seniors on this team from Indianapolis. Ooh, and Rasco fell and lost her footing. Cross court pass, three pointer on the way up, no good. Air ball, and it goes out of bounds. But it did hit a Southern player. Looks like it hit McWilliams, uh, uh, Monty Williams' hand. And, McWayne's hands and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, that was a lot of time off the clock there and not much to show for it by Alcorn, although they, they do retain possession. 145 remaining. And here's a drive and a jump ball. Great defense there by Metcalf, tying the ball up. As you can see, Kyrtis Clark trying to go inside and getting a bucket. 140 remaining, four seconds left on the shot clock. And this whole possession has really been about Southern staying in front on defense. Right with the bucket. Four points for her. And they get the ball in to Harlow. Oh, and it goes off the hands of one of the Southern players. Looked like that Kinsey was uh, trying to get it and it went off of her hands and goes back to Alcorn State. 71-59, yep. 123 left in the game. And that pass just a little too hard there. That was the safety release foul. I mean, you face that pressure from the full court defense, but just put too much mustard on the ball. 
Coming into the ball game, Jordan Aikens, the 6'1 junior from Chicago. Three pointer, no good. And Aikens gets a rebound, so she gets in the stats for this game. And Cabrilla Lee coming across the half court line out of McWayne, and they'll slow things down with 105 remaining in the ball game. Gets it out to Metcalf. All corn. All they can do is just watch the clock evaporate with less than a minute remaining. Five seconds left on the uh, shot clock, and McWayne gets the bucket, adding yep. to her total. Alcorn State should be proud of the effort that they put out on the court this afternoon. Uh, they played a hard, tough game. It was entertaining to watch, especially the way they played defensively, but Southern just making more shots this afternoon than the Lady Braves did. And a rebound by Southern University, and there's nothing that Alcorn do. Alcorn can do now, 73-59, 14-point deficit, less than 30 seconds remaining. And Southern, no hurry, just moving the ball around. And Kyrtis Clark, the senior from Natchez, Mississippi, will not see her team advance into the tournament. McWayne will take a three, no good. Five seconds remaining, and Clark, the senior, will dribble and Hand it off to the freshman, three-pointer on the way, no good, and that's it. The final score, Southern University 73, Alcorn State University 59. Final thoughts, Tommy? Well, it was the tale of two halves. I know they play quarters or periods, whichever way you want to describe it in women's basketball, but Alcorn State gave Southern University fits with their full-court pressure. Uh, after halftime, we saw that Southern was able to convert on those half-court possessions, uh, either when they got away from that pressure or they weren't able, to, didn't have to face that pressure, depending on uh, the play. And they were just able to convert and take advantage and, and protect the basketball. And there you have it. The three-point shot was big, and Southern slowly pulled away and held on today in an entertaining one, even if the final score doesn't necessarily uh, dictate that that's what we saw. 73-59, the final score. Southern University wins it coming up 3 p.m. Eastern. The third semi third quarterfinal game, Texas Southern and Alcorn on the men's side, 3 p.m. tip-off right here on ESPN3. So for Tali Carr, I'm Santoria Black saying so long from Birmingham, where the final score is 73-59 Southern advances. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Carlos Funches, head coach of Southern University, and of course for Alcorn State, Nate Gilbert. Yeah, coach Funches, a championship coach. He won this title not too long ago, right here in Birmingham. Metcalf gets the ball right side, and that's going to be Kin Kinsey. Three-pointer by Kinsey. Good. Alcorn in that 2-3 zone, and Southern able to figure it out there with the long three. So right away, you see Southern University doing a heck of a job. And finally, Alcorn getting on the board. Nice four euro step move to the bucket. First points for the Lady Braves. And a foul coming up. See, both teams like to put pressure on one another. Let's take a look at today's keys of the game presented by Cricket Wireless. Smile, you're on Cricket. Yeah, so we're talking about it here. Extra possessions, winning in transition for Alcorn. They want to put the pressure on Southern with that defense. Uh, and Southern, they want to stay cool. But, hey, they're out there applying their own pressure as well. And they want to be efficient in the half-court game. Look for a lot of ball screens, back cuts. But so far, great start for Southern up 72. Shot up and no good. And a trap. LaRue is trapped down there, and here comes McWayne from Southern University. All she could see was Jaguar jerseys when she spun into that double team. The ball for Southern is.